welcome. And in this video, we're talking about how to short the housing market. So famously in the film, The Big Short, Michael Burry famously shorted the subprime mortgage market in the US. It's a fantastic film. If you haven't seen it, can you short the housing market as an individual? Yes, you can. In this video, I'm going to touch the surface of different ways you can actually short the housing market. It pretty much works in any market, whether you're based in the US, the UK, EMEA or Asia Pacific, whatever. The context shorting is a great way to hedge against losses i.e. in owning shares or indeed if you own property and you want to rip you want to kind of hedge against your house losing value you could hedge by shorting the housing market in the different ways i talk about you can also make money from shorting as i did in march 2020 when i predicted the global stock market crash uh, the second timing is important and impacts profits greatly um Timing is kind of everything in shorting. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Thirdly, losses should be monitored and risks managed well. If you are shorting, it's not the kind of thing you can take your eye off the ball off for weeks at an end. Instead, you need to be looking at this probably daily, if not more frequently. Gains can be large and things move fast. So you need to be on top of things. As I said, it can work in multiple markets. There is a risk of short squeezes. Um, there was a notable example with GameStop. There was a couple of other companies. I shorted AMC Cinemas, I think it was, or there were some firms that weren't doing very well. They were going bust. Can't remember who it was. They had virtually no mother care, I think it was, in the UK. And um, there were these people that were doing short squeezes, even though companies were officially bankrupt. Their shares doubled or tripled overnight. I don't think short squeezes are a risk because... Um, House builders aren't very cool or interesting or sexy. And also Gen Zs and millennials, the people that are going to be type, uh, the type of people that are going to be trying to run or coordinate a short squeeze, they want the housing market to fall so they can get on the property ladder. Has this happened before? The answer is yes. It's happened every housing crisis or recession that I'm aware of. Example with Barrett Developments in 1991 went from 100p to 40p and then again in 2008 it went from a high of 800 or 900p something like that down to 33 a loss of about 97 percent taylor wimpy another uk house builder went from over 350p down to 6p again a loss of over 95%. Red Row went from around 600p to around 100 or 200p. Less of a fall, but still 80 to 90%. Again, those were both in 2007, 8, 9. And you can see this has happened in the past. I'm not making this shit up. And what's my experience with this? I invested in the bounce. In Barrett Developments, Taylor Wimpy, and a few others, Persimmon in the UK. I bought Barrett Developments not at 50p, no. I waited until it was 100p, and then I invested until about 2016 um, when I bought a house. Anyway, um, so I have some experience, but in 2012, 13, 14, I was thinking, is there a way where I can make money when the price is going down? I didn't start shorting until about, about 2019, I shorted Marks and Spencers. And then in March 2020, I shorted indexes, um, predicting the global financial crash to the day. Let's move on. Let, uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the different ways you can short. So shorting suppliers. What's the theory behind this? Well, there are suppliers of bricks, building merchants, retail stores selling things to do with the property market. For example, when house prices dip or they crash, the supplier revenues fall. People don't buy things from builders, merchants as frequently, and they don't buy in as much volume. There's not as much retail things being sold. So there might be a price dip or crash of the supplier's share prices as their revenues fall. Now, there are some risks to shorting suppliers. For example, 
as people move less, they may actually redevelop their properties more, which means the revenue of suppliers like house, um, like Homebase or whoever, B&Q, um, Home Depot, I guess, in the United States, they may still stay OK as people decide to stay in their properties and renovate their properties. So they still may make revenue. And secondly, just because B2C demand falls, it does not mean that other market segments might not grow. For example, the build to sell market in the United Kingdom and in Europe, maybe in the United States as well, could grow, i.e. pension funds, institutional investors, home offices that are, might be investing hundreds of millions. They might be buying bricks, might be going into the builders merchants, not, not directly, but you know, they might be pumping the volume for revenue for these suppliers. So there is a bit of risk here. So let's move on to the next one. ETFs. There is a variety of ETFs, which are funds that collate a lot of companies within those funds. So first, let's look at the type of funds on the, um, on the right hand side. So we've got um, house builders and home builders. We've got um, Factor based real estate. I'm not sure. I'm not too sure about all of these, but that might be to do with the debt potentially. International real estate, that's a bit, you know, says what it does on the tin. Sector based real estate, that might mean office based or some industrial style of real estate potentially. Individual REITs. So that's real estate, real estate investment trusts, which are kind of like more, they're kind of like an asset that's created from real estate. So it's almost a share of, for example, office rent or a share of residential rents. And you can short these individual REITs themselves, or there are ETFs that are created from these REITs. There are also mortgage REITs as well, which is like the mortgage-backed securities that Michael Burry shorted in the big crap, the film that he was in, bum, 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 the great short. So... So there's a range of ETFs that you can look at. What are the things or considerations you need to think about for these ETFs? Well, ensure you understand the actual components of the ETFs. What are the companies? What are the reach of it? Um, and who owns them? For example, you, you can actually find out some of this information or you can try to learn as much as you can about the underlying assets before shorting. Understand the pricing model. Are you buying derivatives or options or futures or are you buying, are you shorting directly, i.e. when the when the ticker goes up um, a pence or a cent or a pound or, or a dollar, uh, are you, is it impacting your profit and loss in the moment or is it an option where you're just responsible for your, the, 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 the deposit you put in or the margin? The difference is when, if a price goes down by 80%, if you own an option, or a derivative, you tend to only lose your margin or your deposit. Whereas if you short directly and the price of an ETF that you short, let's say you short um, the mortgage REITs, let's say those go up, then you will be losing money directly and your losses can be unlimited. So I actually prefer options because you, lost it. you can control your losses to a certain extent. Now, options are complicated. I'm not going to go into the details of options trading in this video, but there can be a way to limit risk to a certain extent. So a good, you need to learn that a good way to short an index or an ETF, um, you need to do, the, the, in a way, there's less due diligence if you're shorting an ETF versus an individual house builder or an individual supplier or an individual book of mortgages. There's less nitty gritty detailed analysis. So these are good, good things or good points to short an ETF index. Stay tuned. I'm going to look at some of the things that I would consider if I were to short an individual company. REITs. What are REITs? REITs are real estate investment trusts. They're an easy way to invest in real estate assets, a bit like stocks. You would own a percentage of apartments, office buildings, cell phone towers, hospitals, et cetera. They kind of, they, they collateralize this debt into a security. So it's a bit like mortgage-backed securities of 2008 fame, 2007 and eight fame, but this is on commercial real estate as well as residential real estate. 
So I think the key things to do here is to understand the landscape, do your due diligence on the REITs, understand the shortening model, as I said before. Now, if you think people are going to default on these mortgages like they did in 2007, 2008, think about the REITs, think about the makeup of the REITs. Are they more likely to default on office buildings, for example? At the moment, it's the highest rate of corporate and company insolvencies in the UK since 2008. So maybe there's a REIT out there for corporate, um, for corporate office buildings. Facebook, my company, the company I work for, is getting rid of some offices in London. Who's that going to affect? We can, you can have a look at that. It's easy to look at. So make sure to do some due diligence if you are going to short a REIT. You want to understand the components of it. Why? The more you understand what you're shorting, the more you understand and you build your competence and you build your conviction. And if you build that conviction, you can make bigger bets. And hopefully, if you're right, you can make more money. If you have low conviction, you don't understand the asset, you shouldn't really be doing it at all. Shorting house builders, the key components to think about are which house builders, what metrics are you going to look at? Do you understand the land bank? Do you understand the profit margins? Do you understand the coverage of what type of properties they sell and why do they sell them? Who are they marketing to? What's the product targeting? What type of people? What are the chances or percentage or probabilities of losses? If you do this well, you can make a load of money. Excuse my language, but if a stock goes down 90% or 95% and you shorten them with an option, you know, you could make 20, 30, 40, 50 extra money. So it's important to understand the details. Okay, let's move on. Some things that I would be looking at if I were to short house builder. This is one of the companies you don't need to short these guys if you don't want to. But as you can see, their revenue has increased pretty much every year. Right. 2018, 4.8 billion. 2019, roughly the same. It went down a little bit in 2020 and then has climbed and it's now up to 5.2 billion. Profit went down from last year. Which is interesting. Profit before tax, 640. Still quite high, but it's less than last year. And it's also less than 2019 as well. That's pre-pandemic. So what I would do is I would look at the annual report as well to start thinking about the makeup of what they have and look at um, the management of what they do. This is a nice, um, David Thomas is a nice guy, actually. I've known him for some time in terms of just, just on an investor basis. Uh, but this is an example, right? They give you the metrics that you need. You can see um, the operational statistics. You can look at like the land bank, for example. That means that if they're telling you that they have land for 4.7 years, they bought the most recent land four years ago, four to five years ago, and they're developing it roughly, um, uh, roughly every five years, essentially. And they're looking for a gross margin of 25%. They've got a lot of net cash. That's good that they've got cash. He is a very good manager. So I wouldn't necessarily be looking to short Barrett Developments, not necessarily. Um, but because, you know, their management has improved. I think this guy is, is very good. The return on capital employees is 30%. He's got over a billion in cash. So that's really important to recognize. The makeup of their land bank, you can see where they actually invest. You can see they've got different companies, different brands. They're targeting different people. But look at the completions by unit type, right? If we think about this in 2022, the percentage of big homes, three and four and five bed homes, is actually 70% of all of their property is larger homes. And flats in London is 6%. So in my mind, I think these houses and the flats in London are at risk of going down in price. They're the highest valued properties. And, you know, interest rates are going up. They're high now, as I predicted. They've gone up as high as I predicted, which was actually triple the amount that all the economists were predicting. Uh, it's not about me. Anyway, 76% of their land bank or their completions by unit type has been in higher risk assets. Now, they're not risky in 2021. They weren't risky in 2022. But maybe in 2023 or 2024 or 2025, there might be some risk there. Completions by deal type, help to buy was 
of their transactions in 2022. Guess what? There's no help to buy anymore. 22% um, was affordable, affordable living. Now, the cost of living crisis is going to hit the affordable buyers, the people. These are kind of typically um, working class people that can't afford to buy uh, normal stock. They have to buy the reduced valued stock. And these guys are going to be squeezed. Help to buy is going to be squeezed as well. So you're looking at 42% of their entire market of completions by deal type struggling potentially in a few years time. And 51%, the traditional private, like I mentioned, 76% of their unit type were bigger homes. And guess what? London, if you think about London and the West of being, what's this, um, nearly 6,000 of all of their transactions, six by, I don't know how many they've done here. It looks like they may have done 10,000 or something. But, but a large percentage of that are in very, very expensive parts of the country where three, four and five bedroom homes are going to be quite a lot. They could be between 500,000 and over a million and 5% mortgages now, 6% mortgages in, in some cases um, at the time of filming. These are going to be unaffordable for a lot of people. So they're, they're staying on the market a long time. An example of this is. You know, looking at properties in Bristol, some of these properties have been on the market for coming up to like eight months. You know, they are staying on the market. This is a four bedroom property. It's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous, it's a gorgeous property. It's staying on the market. People do not want to buy it. Right. And it's a good example that if they have um, property in you know in this in in the south in the west in expensive areas like even this central and east area is 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 still fairly expensive because prices have gone up they're at risk right let's move on a little bit so they have um 25 percent target for um for gross margin they've achieved 23 percent um, and you can see them, they can see the charts here. They're, they're roughly hitting it at the moment. And they're looking at a, a minimum of 25% of return on capital. That's their margin, basically. And they, they got 30% in 2022. But will they hit it if a large percentage of their customer base is struggling to buy the affordable segment, the help to buy segment, the traditional private segment of three and four bedroom homes? Flats in London, people won't be able to buy. Or they'll struggle to buy in London, I think, people, especially if there's negative equity. Hope you found that useful. It was just an overview of how one could look at shorting the housing market. It's something I'm thinking about doing, although my particular circumstances at the moment mean I'm a little bit constrained financially to do so. Um, but if you're interested or already doing this or thinking of doing this, let me know. Have If I had the funds, yes, I would probably dive deeper into this and consider doing this. Consider looking at and diving much deeper into individual companies, individual ETFs, individual REITs, and seeing if there was a way to put on some shorts and maybe some put options against these, maybe one year maybe 18 months and, you know, putting small amounts into this because I honestly think there is going to be a housing correction in 2023, 2024, 2025. And you saw what happened from the start of this um, presentation where house builders dropped, in some cases, 95%. If you have an option, not a short, an option, and you see a movement like that, you know, 50% in a year, the value of that option is going to skyrocket, could be up 20x, you know, so that's why it's kind of interesting to look at, review these and look at these. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I do videos on equities, on basically finding value. You know, I use financial logic. Um, I'm an analyst or a logician, however you want to talk about, I use logic and, and analysis to find trends, find value at either a company level or an industry level. And I have got experience shorting, 
you know, finding the crash of 2020 and shorting indices. Also have experience of buying house builders on the way up, buying Barrett developments at 100 pence, for example, and then selling when it went to 600 pence. Hope you've enjoyed this. Like and subscribe. Knowledge is power. Remember the, the right kind of knowledge as well. And progress is everything. There'll be some other videos that'll be popping up. If you know anybody that would find value from these videos, make sure to share these videos. Remember to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Cheers.